The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Live from San Diego, the fight for our country is here and now with Robert, Justin, and Jason on Long Live America. pleasure to welcome a man who was an ambassador to the UN under the Reagan administration, a Harvard PhD, an author, television host, radio commentator, one of the most sagacious and erudite individuals to ever enter the realm of politics, an incredibly articulate and sagacious individual. It's our distinct privilege and honor to have Dr. Alan Keyes with us. Dr. Keyes, thank you so much for joining us on Long Live America. Uh, you know, you sued Barack Obama in 2008, challenging his eligibility. And we've interviewed both Jerome Corsi and Orly Tate's we know with blinding factual ac- accuracy that Obama's new PDF-only computer-generated birth certificate is an a- it's an absolute fraud, and he's in Ooh. fact he's a, a fake Connecticut social security number zero four two six eight four four two five on a Selective Service registration. How does he get away with this? Is our entire government corrupt? Well, sadly, I think uh, the way I've been putting it in all my writings and thinking the last several years is that we have an elite class, right? Uh, that has abandoned allegiance to government of, by, and for the people. They no longer believe in the constitutional system and its moral uh, outlook and its moral premises. Uh, They actually believe in a return to government by the elite few uh, for the benefit, apparently, of the elite few. And that is exactly what is being implemented now. Uh, I think it's very telling When you listen to these discussions about the end of American exceptionalism, you've heard that phrase. Yes. And I think to myself, does anybody realize that that what they mean is America was the exception to the rule that people didn't get to govern themselves? (laughs) (laughs) And now now they're going back on that, and we're going to be put in the same uh, stew pot uh, that human beings boiled in for many centuries. Uh, prior to the founding of the United States. It's being destroyed. And our founders predicted this. Hamilton gave a speech, went on for six hours at the Constitutional Convention, and one element of that speech was to talk about the permanent ambition of what he called the princely types, right? Uh, The people who are burning with a desire to rule over other people and to have their way uh, with, with, with others. Uh, and, and the founders were seeking to establish a form of government uh, that would prevent the abuses of that ambition from interfering with the uh, ability of, of, you know, just decent ordinary yeah. folks to make a living and raise decent families and have uh, prospects and aspirations that would satisfy their material needs while at the same time they respected the requirements of their conscience. That's the country we're supposed to be, a, a, a kind of country where there would be a decent middle class. Remember that? Yeah, of course so. Uh, where, where people wouldn't be lording it over everybody else or downtrodden under the boot of somebody else in poverty and without hope. But you'd have a decent middle class where folks who were willing to strive would have the decent expectation that that was going to produce good fruit that they could then pass on uh, to new generations. That's a beautiful vision, it seems to me, of human life and human hope. Um, And it's the one the founders sought to establish and defend. But our elites have abandoned that. 
they, they've got all taken with themselves now, as elites do, and, and substituted for that vision of service uh, to a godly understanding of what human society is supposed to be, and they're now substituting the old vision uh, that some people, as Jefferson said, are born with saddles on their backs and others booted and spurred to ride them. Yeah, was, and you look at the present crises in our finances and in our economic life, and they're riding us all right. They're riding us down the road to bankruptcy and hell. <laughs> yes, seeing as our politics are currently practiced, do you think there's any stopping an absolute fraud such as Obama? I think the only thing that's going to demand an accounting for any of this is going to be the people of this country if they wake up, realize what's happening to them, and, and demand, not through you know, some uh, gullible acceptance of phony Republican leadership, but through what I think at its heart the kind of movement that was then labeled the Tea Party, right? That movement actually represented a movement of the people of this country at the grassroots, on their own behalf, uh, looking to not just get fed some phony leadership, but to understand what the country needed and lift up leaders who would truly represent them. And I think we need that return to a demand that there be true representation. When you have uh, these elites in both parties now, basically looking at the people and saying, oh, yeah, we know you think we ought to stop this spending, but we won't. We're not even going to offer you that alternative. That's not representative government, and the people of this country know it. So if we want to call them to account, if we're going to call them to account for their refusal to respect clear, plain language in the Constitution, I mean, the language on eligibility couldn't be any clearer. Yes. And the fact that it refers, by the way, to natural-born citizens, is also, when you have a little familiarity with the background, a clear indication that this was not to be treated as some kind of uh, normal case subject to citizenship laws and so forth and so on, right? It was supposed to be judged according to a standard that was the same standard from which we derive our rights, the standard of God-endowed nature. I yes. See. Yes. In fact, and the relationships between parents and children and communities and individuals that are dictated by that natural law. They don't want to look at that. One of the reasons I think they haven't wanted to look at this issue is because they don't want to acknowledge that the Constitution is a natural law document and that natural born citizen meant exactly what it appears to me. Somebody who is a citizen, not because of government or political fiat, but because they have a tie or, or, or uh, uh, a bond uh, to this nation uh, that comes in the natural way, as a bond from two parents comes to the child, right? Yes. No, in fact, no, I appreciate your sentiments. You know, what role does the New World Order and the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, and these other multinational supergroups, what do they play in controlling our politics? Well, I think that that is a question that now... Uh, thankfully, a lot of people's eyes are being opened. Uh, at one time, uh, the very idea that we were being subjected to an assault that was coordinated uh, in a very thorough fashion among elitist groups, this was just something everybody laughed at, right? But I think since the situation in 2008, uh, the, uh, uh, really the attack on the financial stability of the United States. Uh, more and more people have opened their eyes. Uh, I uh, remember a few months ago reading an article in the Washington Times that went into detail uh, about uh, the uh, fact that people who were looking into this uh, were reaching the conclusion that this had to be an effort that was coordinated uh, um, as, a, as an attack against the United States. Uh, and I think that's been clear to a large degree of the follow-up as well. Uh, now, you can identify some of the people who are involved and have been for a long time, like George Soros. But I think you also know that uh, he goes and sits at tables, uh, like at this Bilderberg conference, with people from all over the world. Hosts himself and sponsors such uh, 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 meetings and machinations. Uh, and so at the end of the day, I think the idea that we are being subject to an, a coordinated elitist assault, uh, on behalf of an effort to impose, not just on us, but the entire world, uh, a kind of elite tyranny. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, and the reason the United States has come in for special attention 
is because we were a country that was strong, powerful enough, we could stand in the face of the whole world, right? And maintain our liberty. Yeah. No. That was unacceptable. And I think there's been a systematic effort to undo it. And by the way, if you think about it, who is the ideal representative of that systematic effort? Who is the ideal instrument? Who in every <laughs> area of policy has been carrying out the enervation of our military, the destruction of our economic wherewithal, the demoralization of our people with all kinds of apologies and, and notions that we've all just been thoroughly evil and there's nothing redemptive about the United States. It's Barack Obama. Yeah, Barry Sortero. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> Dr. Keyes, uh, Obama, he's made our nation more racially divided than it's ever been in recent times, and he continuously plays the race card. In fact, according to Gallup, 99% of blacks voted for him. Do you think black people will vote for him again in 2012 based solely on race, despite his abysmal failure as a president? Well, I, I, I am moved in my heart when I think of that question to just pray to my Lord God, because I think that uh, this is something that really requires God's help. It's a tragedy, in my opinion, of enormous and historic proportions to see a people so absolutely and thoroughly betrayed, right? And at that by their own choice. Uh, and because, think about it. In the first instance, Barack Obama, and I used to tell these reporters this in 2008 when they were telling me I was supposed to be all proud <laughs> that Barack Obama was doing well and so forth. And I said, well, why would I be proud? Step number one, that somebody who uh, countenances infanticide and baby killing and socialist totalitarianism and all this junk, I'm supposed to be proud that he's doing well. I'm scared to death that he's doing well and hope that <laughs> it won't keep going because it's bad for my country and bad for everybody. Step number two, why was I supposed to be feeling all good about somebody who wasn't even part of the historic saga of the, quote, ethnic group to which I belong, right? <laughs> Barack, Obama is not a, Barack Obama is not somebody who looks back to the heritage of American black people. He has no connection with it whatsoever. Doesn't anybody realize this? Absolutely correct. And, and by the way, uh, I, and I've read several articles that establish this uh, with reasonable certitude. So far from being somebody who looks back on the heritage of the folks who uh, were brought to America, enslaved, uh, went through the spiritual and, uh, and moral and other challenges that eventually uh, uh, helped to end that slavery and so forth and so on, uh, far from coming from that background, his, the tribe that his father is associated with, assuming he is his father, in Kenya, uh, the, 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 the putative you know, Barack Obama Sr., uh, that is a tribe of, of um, uh, Islamicized black Africans who were well known to have developed their tribal wealth and status uh, on the basis of the slave trade. Oh, my God. So the irony of this situation is that you have black folks in America going all rah, rah, there's a victory and so forth and so on. And they're rooting to put into this historic position, first black president of the United States, somebody who was ancestors were part of the slave trade <laughs> does this make sense this is a tragedy that's the ultimate and irony. what is more they're asked to do it on a basis he's black that validates the premise of racism by which they were oppressed no I... they do see that but i don't see how people can miss this i would no more vote for barack obama because he was black right uh then i would feel it right for some body who's i don't know a, a white person to say i'm gonna disregard Alan Keyes because I'll only vote for white people. Of course. Does this make sense? That's racism. The, the idea that was appealed to, and, and it's so clear, we all know these words of Martin Luther King, was that people were to be judged not on the basis of the color of their skin, but on the basis of the content of their character. Wasn't that what was said? I believe so. So you're going to look at that substantive indicator, and, and that substantive indicator says, well, this is a guy who defends the killing of infants born alive after a failed abortion. He says they should be set aside to die. I can think of a few things as deeply immoral as this. This is a guy who stands in front of uh, a Christian audience and says, I support marriage, and then has his whole career championed gay marriage. Yes. I don't know which is worse. The position he takes or the lion constantly about it. But either way, this is not a good character. No. <laughs> yes? uh, and, and, and so the, you could go through a whole list of these things. And I say to myself, 
I, 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 you want me to vote for that based on the color of his skin? Like that's going to do something more than embarrass and shame everybody who has anything to do with supporting him? Because uh, that's what's happening. And, and I think that folks uh, who are a part of the black American community ought to wake up. You know, one of the things that Martin Luther King emphasized was that the fight for justice that was waged by black Americans wasn't a fight for black people's justice or justice for black people. It was a fight that was based on the idea that justice is the God-given right of all people. Should not be denied to black Americans because it shouldn't be denied to anybody. Exactly right. Not innocent babes in the womb, not um, hardworking Americans now being victimized by these elitists. Nobody should have to be subject to it. Uh, and, and so the idea that you'd support some totalitarian socialist who believes in disregarding that understanding of right and justice for the sake of his ideological power agenda, that that has something to do with the black American heritage except betraying it, I don't see how anybody fails to see this. No, uh I, I agree precisely right. Like, Dr. Keyes, you're a Harvard man. In your opinion, why does Harvard turn out so many radical left-wingers? Is it just a communist factory at this point? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I went to Harvard, I started in the late 60s. And it was still possible to study with people on the Harvard faculty who at the very least had some respect for intellectual integrity and the, and the uh, rigors of what was supposed to be the discipline of learning and, and truth, right? Uh, and, and so there was uh, some hope that you could get through without simply being indoctrinated. Uh, and uh, I think that that has sadly uh, changed a lot over the course of the decades. Uh, it is still possible to go to Harvard and get some kind of an education, but it requires uh, that you stand apart from what has now become the sort of prevailing cultural premise uh, of these uh, leftist institutions of, of so-called higher learning. Uh, that seem thoroughly devoted to destroying the very understanding of uh, learning, knowledge, education, science uh, that the institutions were originally built upon. Uh, and, and that's a sad but true comment uh, on what's been going on. And I think it's the nature of those institutions now that have become factories for this kind of totalitarian-minded elite. Uh, that is now seeking to overthrow the constitutional system. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.